The news day continues here on One News Now. I'm Pauline Rizosa. Senator Robin Padilla apologized for his previous statements during a Senate hearing about marital rape. In a Facebook post, Padilla said he never said that it was okay for husbands to force their wives to have sex. Recall that Padilla asked attorney Lorna Kapunan what to do when men are, quote, in heat and their wives refuse to have sex with them. Several women's groups called out Padilla's statements and described them as blatant disregard for women's rights. The Philippines and China accused each other of ramming vessels and performing dangerous maneuvers in the South China Sea. Maria Fernandez with the report. Another flare-up at sea, barely two months since the Philippines and China pledged to de-escalate maritime tensions. And once again, both sides blamed the other over a collision along Escoda or Sabina Shoal in the Spratly Islands. The China Coast Guard released a short video of the encounter early Monday morning showing the Philippine Coast Guard vessel BRP Bagakai sailing side-by-side -side a China Coast Guard ship. The China Coast Guard said the BRP Bagakai ignored repeated solemn warnings and deliberately collided with one of their vessels. China also accused the Philippines again of intruding into its maritime territory. The Chinese foreign minister also called out the Philippines' efforts to maintain the BRP Teresa Magbanwa, which has been stationed in Sabina Shoal since April. The Philippine side has sent a marine police vessel to intrude into the waters of Sabina Shoal in an attempt to resupply the Philippine marine police vessel stranded there in order to realize its long-term presence. This move by the Philippine side seriously infringes on China's sovereignty, seriously violates the provisions of the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea, and seriously jeopardizes the peace and stability of the South China Sea. But for the National Security Council, it's the China Coast Guard that should be blamed for the collision. That short video um, does not tell the entire story, no? It's, it's a sliced video, it's a misleading video. It again shows China as the benevolent actor here. No, Allegedly, they were conducting a law enforcement operation controlling uh, the movement of the two ships when in fact, it was not 4410 or BRP Bagakai who ramped 21551. It was the other way around. 21551, in truth, ran our vessel, BRP Pagagay, two times. As proof, the Philippine Coast Guard released photos of the damage on BRP Bagakai. One other PCG vessel, the BRP Cape and Hanyo, was also subjected to the CCG's aggressive maneuvers, which left a hole in its deck. The PCG said, this is the first known incident of China's aggression along Sabina Shoal. It's also the most destructive so far, but thankfully, there were no casualties. Experts say China may be employing the same tactics they did to counter past resupply missions to Ayungin Shoal. To deconstruct yung tactics doon sa Sabina Shoal, pareho lang naman sa Ayungin Shoal eh. Uh, what, yung Teresa Magbanwa, yung BRP, is actually yun yung parang Sierra Madre eh. Kasi naka-stay naka, naka din na siya ron eh. Ang nagsusustain sa kanya, yung dalawang Coast Guard vessel na mas maliit. So, Ang ginawa ng China ron, tiniti, tin, uh, ang tinitira niya yung nagsusustain, yung logistics component nung, nung presence natin doon. In the like manner na tinitira niya palagi sa yung shoal, yung resupply boat. Okay? Kasi kung matira niya yung logistics component natin, eventually, mapipilitan tayo i-pull out si Teresa Magbanwa pag naubusan ng fuel yan o naubusan ng pagkain yan. Meanwhile, the United States has thrown its support once more for the Philippines. Ambassador to the Philippines Mary Kay Carlson said, quote, The U.S. stands with the Philippines in condemning the China Coast Guard's dangerous maneuvers near Sabina Shoal that endangered lives and caused damage to PCG vessels. We are committed to supporting the rights of our friends, partners, and allies under international law. Former Senior Associate Justice Antonio Carpio insisted that it's time to file another arbitration case against China. There's really no reason why China would intentionally ram a Philippine Coast Guard vessel. None at all because there's freedom of navigation there. And it's so far, it's over 20 nautical miles from the lagoon itself. 
that's very far. That's beyond that, even uh, beyond that, a territorial sea if uh, it's called a shoal is a high tide feature. So this is deliberate. Mm. This was ordered from somebody up there in the chain of command of their Coast Guard. And what, and we have to respond appropriately. We have to, the best thing since uh, Coast Guard is a civilian, uh, uh, civilian uh, vessel, this is now governed by UNCLOS. It's unlike uh, Union Shoal, which is a military activity. This is a civilian activity. We can go to UNCLOS and and sue China for damages, and that and the tribunal will assert, will reaffirm that that is part of the EEZ, and that will again debunk China's 10 dash line. So we we have to do that uh, because what China fears most is there will be another arbitral award. At the same time, China has lodged a diplomatic protest against the Philippines over the presence of BRP Teresa Magbanwa in Sabina Shoal. The Philippines, on the other hand, has repeatedly insisted on its rights to deploy a vessel in the area, which falls under our exclusive economic zone. For News 5, Rio Fernandez, We Are One News. Now, only a few percent of Filipinos in Lebanon want to be repatriated despite the ongoing conflict in the Middle East nation. The Foreign Affairs Department said only 738 out of 11,000 Filipinos are currently waiting for exit clearance. DFA said Filipinos in Lebanon opted to stay there because they are already used to conflicts. The Migrant Workers Department assured OFWs in Lebanon that they will protect them from the ongoing war between the Hezbollah and Israeli forces. We're bringing them to safe shelter, and speaking of shelter, we have a shelter ready uh, for them. Uh, and then, of course, uh, may crisis plan tayo. We're all set, we're all ready. Now in the weather, Pagasa is monitoring a new low pressure area. It was last spotted some 1,030 kilometers east-northeast of extreme northern Luzon. Its chance of developing into a tropical cyclone remains slim as of the moment. The southwest monsoon or Habagat will continue to trigger rains in some areas, while isolated rains are expected over Batanes and Babuyan Islands. The rest of the country, meanwhile, may also experience rains due to localized thunderstorms. The local government of La Trinidad Benguet is considering placing the capital town under a state of calamity due to the rising number of dengue cases. Based on their latest data, over 1,400 dengue cases were reported since January of this year. Two of them already succumbed to the illness. Health workers and volunteers have conducted fogging operations and other methods to destroy possible breeding sites of mosquitoes. The Trinidad Mayor Romeo Salda said they are still waiting for the recommendation of their health experts if they need to declare a state of calamity. Carlos Yulo's sports occupational therapist, Hazel Callowood, shares how she helped the gymnast towards his Olympic journey. Here's an excerpt from her interview on The Big Story. Tell us all about your journey with um, Carlos Yulo. How did it start and mm -hmm. what? how exactly did you help him? Okay, so um, at first, uh, I was mainly in charge of providing him um, soft tissue occupational therapy, which entailed providing him um, tune-up for his muscles, tendons, ligaments, giving him injury prevention exercises. And then um, 2024 is when we became more... Um, more on point and like intensive and full time in providing him what he needs. So um, as we were doing training camps in other countries, um, we were able to delve into helping him fix his biomechanics. Um, it also evolved in providing him data science services because mm -hmm. um, I do believe that even if um, even if you're every day you're doing training but you're not able to keep track of what you're doing it's going to be difficult to to see how you're progressing or where to spot the patterns are that you need to fix in order for you to really focus on fine-tuning in an elite athletic uh, level 
So, so there's a lot of science that goes into it, right? Um, mm -hmm. But what I wanted to point it out was the maturity of Kaloy in Paris. Mm -hmm. It was, yes. um, it was so different from... Surprising, really. In a good way. And she interviewed him many years ago. <laughs> yes, yes. And how, five years and she, ago. She was the one who pointed out the transformation to us. Kaloy was um, shy, right? And mm -hmm. even in competition... Um, his confidence wasn't really, you know, in full display. But in mm -hmm. Paris, everything was different. And mm -hmm. um, describe how, when you first met Kaloy and how he transformed into the gold medal he, medalist he is today. Um, when I first um, met uh, Carlos, um, he was definitely a bit more within his shell. Um, and now that, um, you know, you've seen him, um, I can describe him as he, he has more fighting spirit in him. He's definite, he definitely feels um, more in tune with God because he, he now he's um, more prayerful. Um, and also the way he understands himself and his emotions, um, it's, it's more scientific, it's less judgmental. Um, in oneself and he has more of a structure on how he's going to um, go about his um, daily tasks, monthly tasks and his okay. life. In the PBL, well, there's only one spot left for the quarterfinals of the PBL Reinforced Conference. Capital One Solar Spikers is eyeing for better positioning in the quarters by facing the winless Galleries Tower High Risers later at 1 p.m. Then at 3 in the afternoon, the next lead chameleons will attempt an upset against Signal HD Spikers. Then at 5 p.m., the Farm Fresh Foxies will try to nab the final quarterfinal spot by facing the undefeated Akari Chargers. You can catch all the sizzling volleyball action on One Sports, One Sports Plus, and the Pilipinas Live app. And those are the top stories of the hour. I'm Pauline Verzosa. We are One News.